many South Africans um, grow up believing or perhaps being told that how they feel, their mood or their emotions are, are secondary issues mm. to working, putting food on the table, getting things done. I think um, many South Africans are, are in, in essence workhorses. I, I know uh, in, in my family life or in my personal life, I often say to myself, just get it done, think about how you feel later. But something that you said was really interesting to me and that's what's happening inside of us actually affects our bodies um, yeah. and, and manifests that way. And I suppose in understanding that, I, I would realize or, or assume then that how we feel our moods um, aren't just these sort of airy-fairy things happening inside of us. Actually, we need to deal with them. You do, and there are different ways of doing that. So let's take a, a few scenarios. You're walking in a forest with a friend. It's a beautiful day birds are singing, you're engaged in conversation. It's a lightness about the way that you're doing things and actions that you take. Out of the corner of your eye, you see some movement. You're not sure what it is. In a moment, what's the kind of feeling that you have? What's the shift that you experience? Well, you kind of wonder, if you're interested in what that might be and you're curious, you, know, you turn excitedly to see what it is. If it's a snake, if it's a spider, if it's a rat, something that you have a different experience with, your response is different. Now, in that moment, what you're doing is you're working with your emotions, but your emotions predispose you towards taking certain actions. And emotions that hang around are moods, and they predispose you to action. So very often what happens is we live in the world of language. So we say, ah, well, you've got to get over that emotion. Don't bring emotion to work. It gets in the way of what you do. You can't have emotions. I think you women can't are often let them told this too. More than you can imagine. Mm. And what's interesting is that when I'm working with men, they express that they have to suppress some of their emotion when they're angry, when people won't listen to them, when they won't care for them. And a lot of that, when they're busy suppressing it, they're not paying attention to what their mood's trying to tell them. They can be, become more assertive, they can become clear in saying what they want to say. The emotion doesn't have to be emotionally expressed. The mood can help you to say, oh, there's something I'm not taking care of here. What if I was able to say, I, I don't agree with what's happening here, and I'd really like to have a conversation with you about how we deal with that better. There's a lot of anger that's driven that conversation. There's a lot of stuff that's sitting in there about, this isn't working for me. But the way in which we use our mood and manage the emotions inside it can actually affect the way that we do things. So rather than suppressing, please don't leave the, the, the feelings and sensations you have, because you're only bringing half of yourself to work. You're only bringing a teeny tiny part of you. You know, you, you live in a mood, it's part of how you've grown up, it's part of what you do, and it's part of some of the beauty that you can bring to things that you do. So if you come into the studio, for example, and you're in a really great mood, the people that you meet, you have an impact on. The people that you influence, you have an impact on. When you're not in such a cool mood, that influences it. And being able to say, hey, what can I do about this? Rather than <gasps> suppress it, it doesn't go away when you do that. Now, what do you say to the viewer who's watching this and says, Nikki, something that you've said really resonates for me and I want to start identifying those moods and at least trying to figure out where they come from. Um, it seems a bit like a daunting yeah. process. Is, is there a simple way to introduce yourself into, I suppose, um, recognizing your moods? Absolutely. Pay attention. Become a great observer of yourself. Notice um, when you're in a good mood. Notice if, if you sit down and, and write down, you know, what are, what are my positive experiences? What are some of my not so great experiences? What do they link to? What events in my past have led to this? Is this something that, that I've experienced for a long time? Is this something that's been hanging around? And then start saying, well, what do I feel in that? Is it a thing in my stomach? Does my chest go all tight? You know, am, am I fearful of something? Is it something that I'm that I'm anxious about, something I'm excited about, and what are those kind of things. And there's a lot of wisdom that sits inside our bodies. Our bodies have taken care of us for a long time. They've helped us through difficult situations even before we find the words for it. And being able to engage with what's your body telling you, what's happening with your breathing, simple thing. You know, what's happening with, you know, do you notice when you're in a, in a light mood? Do you notice when, when it just seems a little bit harder and when you begin noticing those, you start noticing what's triggering that. And there's lots of triggers. Change is a great one. Um, hormonal changes, environmental changes, and just be aware that those things will impact on you. And you can anticipate a lot of that. 
and just noticing what are the sorts of things that trigger. So the, the obvious things are music of, often relaxes people, but it can be jolly annoying as well. You know, it, it can be the sort of thing if, you, if, there's, if it's too loud and you're a quiet person, you know, that's going to irritate you. A screensaver, for example, sitting at the desk. Some people have really busy screensavers. That will really drive me mad. I like a calm, cool screensaver, you know. But that's the sort of thing that influences how I, I engage with things. And the same, it'll be different for everybody. So although they're common triggers that we can be aware of, there are also triggers that are quite unique to each one of us. So starting with observing yourself, noticing what's going on for you, noticing what you what can shift you, trying little things, sleeping, getting good sleep, um, eating eating good food, noticing what food influences you, noticing the role of sugar in your life, no, noticing all those kind of day to day stuff. That's what mood is. We're living in it. We're feeding it. We're looking after it. And it's taking on expression in our bodies in different ways. Nikki, you've given us so much to think about. <laughs> but there is more where this came from, and that's going to be at the Psychology of Learning Festival. Tell us a little bit more about that. What's really exciting this year, and is very different to last year, is that they've expanded the program to include a variety of um, conversations around coaching, a variety of different talks that are geared towards exploring some of the other elements of what living is about and how to be resourceful in living. They run in Cape Town on um, Thursday, Friday and Saturday um, and they've got parallel, they've got a film series as well as a coaching series as well as a psychology series. So there's a lot in it for, for anybody who's interested um, and it's quite hard to choose so rather than opting for one thing or the other I would suggest people go online, have a look at what's there and, and see for themselves what they're interested in. And if there's not a topic that they are interested in the organization is very happy to receive um, you know, words about what they can do and will run series or workshops on there outside of that time. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. It's my pleasure.